Well, hi, it's true. <laughs> I joined the C Club and uh, I just want to talk a little bit about my journey and just to make sure that everybody who experiences this or knows somebody who has it just sort of has a better feel and better understanding of what really this whole process is about. So I'll start out, um, th and there'll be more um, vlogs, and this is what I'm doing as a vlog because I'm actually too lazy to type all this out. So um, it just seemed better if I could communicate. And again, this is only important if you know somebody who has cancer or you have cancer or somebody who you know has cancer. I just kind of wanted to, um, and I, I will admit this is totally therapeutic for me. But one of the first things for me was like, do I tell everybody? How do I make this announcement? What do I do? So after a few months of contemplation, I finally just decided that this is it. I'm just gonna put it out there. And if I can help one person with their life, I'm all in. And that one thing is make sure that you and everybody you know gets a 3D mammogram every year. I never missed a year, but this is the first year I had a 3D. Um, I've always been one of those people that had De um, dense breast tissue and I've had a biopsy before and nothing turned out so I figured I was golden and it probably wasn't going to affect me in my lifetime. So um, I've also been told that um, I live in the Green Bay area as you all know and I've also been told that um, I should be glad my mom's not from here. Um, I'm not from here originally and um, a lot of people think things are environmental and I will say that I'm certainly not the first person to get breast cancer. Um, many of my good friends have led the way before me. You know who you are because you've been really great support to me <laughs> through this whole thing. So um, I just kind of want to pay it forward or pay it back and let other people know kind of what to experience and what it's all about. So for me, my whole journey started in August, I got this letter from the clinic. I go to a local clinic called Prevea, and they have a um, sort of a breast specialty department, which is pretty cool that they have this. Um, for the last, I think, six years, I've had my mammograms there, um, one biopsy, and everything's been great. So this year, I got a letter, and it spoke about um, just determine with your insurance company which mammogram they'll cover. So I just kind of left it on my desk for, I hate to say this, but a couple months. And then the beginning of November, I was like, oh, you know what? I need to get this done. It's almost the end of the year. And my annual time was like November 15th or something. So um, I wasn't a normal October girl. So at first I thought, you know what? I should just wait till next year and start with a whole deductible. But then I thought, ah, you know what? I'll just get it done. So I called, made an appointment. My appointment was for thanks, the day before Thanksgiving, November 21st. And at the very last minute, I realized I had a funeral to go to with one of my coworkers and her, for her mom. And I thought that was important. So I called to cancel my appointment. I explained I had a funeral to go to. And they said, oh, you know what? We've got an opening at five o'clock today. Would that work? I was like, oh, that's golden. No problem, I'll be there. So at five o'clock, I went in for my 3D mammogram. And um, one of the things I wanna to add to is, um, I have never looked down in my life at a mammogram and I never will. So that's kind of been my savior. I know some people think it's uncomfortable. Um, that's never really bothered me, but I have never looked down. So I, I kind of think that's been my secret. So anyway, a 3D is pretty much like every other mammogram, <clears throat> only they can just see a lot more. So friends of mine warned me and said, hey, you're getting the 3D, just expect a call back. And I thought, okay, no big deal. So had the mammogram and then had Thanksgiving on um, Thursday with friends. And then the next day I, we were having Thanksgiving at um, our house. My parents are coming over at three o'clock. So on Friday, that next day after Thanksgiving, I got a call from the clinic at 10 in the morning. And they said, hey, um, we found some things in your mammogram that are of concern and we'd like you to come in. And they were so nice. They were like, I see you work. And I said, hey, I'm off today. Um, any chance I can get in today? And they were like, yeah, we'll get you in at one o'clock. So this is perfect. Uh, my parents are coming at three. So I went in and um, I had my first ultrasound on my breast. I didn't even know they did that. And um, so after I had the ultrasound, they um, brought me into like another 
room and had me sit down with a nurse and the nurse was so nice and she just started talking about next steps and um, what could pertain and what's gonna happen. And after like three minutes, I was like, hey, wait, wait a minute, do you think I have cancer? And she gave me this look and then she said, you know, um, you've asked, so I need to tell you that everything looks like it's highly possible. So at that point, tears just started streaming down my eyes and I just, I was in total shock. I actually never thought I was gonna get breast cancer. <laughs> I know, right? That sounds crazy, but I, that's what I really thought. So um, she and I talked for a while. We made a next appointment for the following Wednesday for me to come in and get a biopsy. But at that point and everything she was saying, um, I pretty much knew. So, but I had to get home because my parents are coming over at three o'clock. So I walked in the door at quarter to three and my husband, Bob, had the turkey out. He had all the food cooked. Everything was out and my parents should be here any minute. And he said, so how did it go? And I said, it went great. He said, nothing wrong. I said, nope, everything's great because I just, I wasn't ready to deal with it with my parents coming over. So my parents came over. We had Thanksgiving. Um, we had a great meal, they left, and then I said to Bob, um, hey, listen, it's not all great. In fact, they think I have cancer. So, um, and this makes me cheer up again. <laughs> so <clears throat> we both just cried that night. It was a really, really tough night. And then I still hadn't had the biopsy yet, so <clears throat> kind of that Friday night was really tough. And then Saturday, kind of just woke up, I woke up, um, just really kind of thought about, okay, um, this is a time, and many of you know that I've always used this statement, but this is a time I got to put my girl, big girl pants on and um, take over and make sure that this just goes right. So on the following Wednesday, I went in for my biopsy, and they said, you will find out in two to three days. Well, I'm like, oh my God, I have to find out by Friday. I can't go another weekend with this. So then that Friday night, two days later at 5.30, the nurse called me from the clinic and I talked with her for 38 minutes. It was, um, everything was positive. So I did have cancer and then it was just a matter of when I could get in next. And then, so this is kind of weird. The doctor who specializes, um, Dr. Colette Sonschmidt, she was gonna be off that next week. And I was like, oh, you know what, I, I can't wait. I need to move forward with this stuff. I need to get going. I need to have a plan. And I said, let's just, is there something we can do until she gets back? Is there something? And she said, yes, actually, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do all your blood work. We're gonna assume that you're having surgery. So we're gonna do all your blood work. And then we are going to um, do your MRI and get these tests done. We have to do some um, breathing testing and that kind of stuff just to make sure that you're, an EKG is what it is, sorry. And so we'll do all that. And then when you have your appointment that following Monday, we'll have all the test results and then we'll know what that direction is after you meet with her. And that would be a two hour meeting that following Monday. So in, I mean, I'm ready to go. I'm like, let's just get moving on this and let's attack. So. I'll bring you up to that. So then that following um, Monday, all my tests were great. They called me on that again that Friday and told me all my tests were great. And I had to add to, um, I'm sure all clinics are like this, but for some reason, they really seem to specialize in cancer. And I don't know if it's just breast cancer, but you couldn't find a nicer, more supportive group. It's just amazing how all that kind of comes into play. Um, they're just so kind, so thoughtful, and they let you know that you have a really great support team. So that evolved into um, <laughs> the meeting on Monday and sitting down. And um, another thing I wanna say and recommend is always, always bring a friend with you. Whether it's your sister, a sibling, or a no, sister is a sibling, um, somebody that's related to you or just a good friend, make sure you have that person because you're only gonna retain like 30% of what they say. And for me, my husband, he's totally all in, but he hears a lot, but you just need that other person. And he, he actually hears more than I do what they're saying. But um, when you have that meeting, that first meeting with your doctor, after you've had all your tests, it's all about, okay, these are your options. They don't tell you like, 
you should get a mastectomy. They don't tell you you should get a lumpectomy. They say, here's how it all works. These are the percentages. These are the options you have. And now what do you want to do? So based on the, the statistics, the studies, um, and I need to also add that things have changed so much in the last two years, let alone five years. And um, so I went with a lumpectomy and um, that was done like uh, the week before Christmas. So <clears throat> that's all taken out at this point. And, um, but I, again, I would just say, make sure you've got a great support system because here's some fun facts. Um, if you have a great support system, you are three times um, greater to have a success rate. So basically it's, your success rate is three times greater when you've got a great support system and a positive attitude. So um, I've really been blessed to have people in my life who have just been there for me, um, go to appointments with me, check in daily. Um, I just feel so fortunate for that because that's the one thing you find out. And these are the words that you want to hear. And when people say these to you, it's just like, it just brings you to tears. Um, it is, we're in this together. And when you have people in your life that say to you, listen, don't worry, we're in this together, we've got you. It's just, just so emotional. Which brings me to another thing. <laughs> So my clinic gives you a book and it's, um, a, it's like a workbook. It's a huge book um, and it walks through a lot of things, what to expect and all these kinds of things, but they insist that you read the first 13 pages. And the, 13, the first 13 pages are all about how emotional cancer is. And I thought, well, really, how emotional can it be? Well, guess what? It's super emotional. And it's emotional because, and they don't say this in the book, but after more studying with my doctor and talking to her in conversations, I realize why, but cancer sucks the serotonin out of you. So not only are you dealing with all of these emotions, but when you have that sort of void, you just, it's like I can tear up if somebody hugs me or is so genuine in what they say to me, it just makes me tear up. So that's been um, a really huge lesson. And the other thing about cancer that's really tough is that people can't see cancer, so they don't know what you're going through at the time. So that's, that's hard. And you know, like if you have a broken leg or something, it's, it's interesting because people can see that. But if you have cancer, people can't see that. And the one other the super emotional thing about cancer is that you can't do anything. Like you can't blame yourself, you can't control it, you can't, it's just, you're, it's in God's hands, it's just not in your control. And when you have a personality like mine, um, and you've lost control, that is the most humbling thing you could ever imagine. And I, I've just found that to be, um, just really, I, I guess the best word is humbling and human and there's just nothing you can do. And that will bring you to tears just because you, not that you're feeling sorry for yourself, but you're just so frustrated because there's nothing you can do. So I'll kind of fast forward here to, um, and I'll, and I'll, again, I'll do another video, but, um, and I don't want to keep too much of your time, but I just wanted to kind of go through this stuff, but some kind of funny things that have happened along the way as well is um, I had surgery um, a couple days before Christmas and the week before Christmas. And it worked out again, perfect, because I had already scheduled vacation. So that's what I spent my vacation doing. Uh, we did not have a wonderful Christmas here. I didn't put on any decorations or anything because I wasn't sure what I could handle um, based on my arm strength. And that's one thing I'll talk about in a second. But um, just knowing everything that was going on and um, again, I had people come to the hospital with me. Um, I went in at 8.30 in the morning. My first, um, my first, uh, I, I guess, um, treatment or thing was done at 10.30. And then I had another one at 1. And then my lumpectomy at 3. And at 10, they actually do what they call um, this nuclear medical medicine thing. And they... Um, they're testing, they're, they're, it's going to track into your lymph nodes to see whether you've got cancer there or not. 
but that is, um, now bear with me here, that, and some people, and you know who you are, told me that was the most painful thing of all of having cancer, but they actually stick a needle into your nipple to um, put those fluids in, and it's crazy. I mean, you just think, oh my God, I don't know if I can tolerate this, but I had a really great doctor, and I got through that with just um, flying colors, so that was fine. And then <clears throat> I should back up. They, when you go to the hospital that day, they give you a happy pill. So you're kind of like, you can't eat or anything all day, but you're kind of like a little groggy, but kind of fun. And um, again, my husband was there. My parents had stopped by. Um, I had a couple really great friends stop by, but five girls um, stayed in the hospital <laughs> the whole time. And uh, this is important to remember. So it's kind of a small room, probably like eight by 10. And um, I feel very blessed whoever came to the hospital, but um, in particular, um, these girls just sat there, they pulled my hair, they played with my hair, and we just laughed the whole day. Um, they had a picnic lunch, and um, I think Bob was there, and then these um, five girls. And this is what's kind of funny. It was um, Sherry, who's 61, soon to be 62. Oh, that's, that's important to note. I'm 59, um, Diane, like 55, Nancy, 50, Dia, 48, and Anne, I think 53. So that the range in ages went from 48 to nearly 62. And um, as I said, we were kind of laughing all day in the hospital and stuff. And then the nurse, anesthetist came to get me and she started administering some anesthesia and um, I was kind of out of it. But as she was take, wheeling me out of the room, she said to everybody, this is the part that's just dumbfounding. She said, don't worry girls, your mom's gonna be just fine. So um, I think my head spun around like three times. <laughs> and I was like, mom. And um, then I was out and I was having surgery. And <laughs> after that, I was, um, I had my lung apectomy and I was ready to go home. And that kind of just had to heal for four to five days. Oh, excuse me, excuse me, for like four weeks. So um, I would have started probably radiation a little sooner, but that had to heal. And then I got an infection. And what that was about was um, my breast, like my left breast where I had my lumpectomy, just was hurting so bad. And on um, Saturday, which would have been... Um, like the, I don't know, the 6th or something, maybe the 4th of January. Um, <clears throat> I was at home and I just decided I'm in so much pain, I need to do something. So, um, and we were going on a cruise the following weekend, so I need to make sure that I took care of everything. And the cruise we were going on was for work and that was not even planned, but my boss who was pregnant, um, couldn't get on a cruise ship and it was to schedule, it was to take customers. So she, I was supposed to be in Dallas. So she and I switched places at the last minute and I, Bob and I went on this company cruise to, with customers and, um, which was awesome to do, <laughs> but it was just kind of last minute and, um, having this infection could have really messed things up. So what happened was on a Saturday, I was, um, just thinking, I'm in so much pain, I really need to do something. So I called, and um, three and a half hours later, like at quarter to three in the afternoon, they called and said, you need to get to the um, urgent care. You need to get over there, and they close at four, so you need to go. So I thought, what's going on now? But aside from that, um, we were supposed to go to a dinner party that night, and I was to make a Greek salad. So and as I'm waiting for them to call and stuff, I finally decided I was gonna make this Greek salad. So I've got red onion, I've got kalamatas, um, whatever, goat cheese, all of these things that um, are kind of smelly. So I had been making this salad and I had to get to urgent care. And I think I washed my hands like 27 times before I left, but I could still kind of smell that stuff. So I get to urgent care and she looks at my breast and my breast was just kind of like red, probably like in a two inch diameter. And it just didn't look right and it hurt. So when I got to urgent care, the doctor looked at it and said, oh geez, we've got to get you to the ER. And I'm like, oh my God. And I, again, I need to tell you that I 
still felt like I smelled like olives and onions and stuff. I'm like, oh, I said, can I just run home and take a shower quick? Plus I thought I had to go to this dinner party and I thought I just need to kind of get organized. And they're like, no, you need to get to the ER right now. So that was interesting. So I called Bob and said, listen, I can't go. Take care of that salad. Um, get it to where it needs to go. And he said, no, I'm not going to do that. Um, I'll drop the salad off or somebody will pick it up and I'll meet you at the ER. So um, I walk into the ER and, and this is really fun because, you know, again, no one can kind of see what's going on with you. So I walk into the ER and they said they were going to call beforehand and the receptionist says, um, yes. And I have to say, um, yeah, I have an infection in my breast. And then she looks at me like I'm from outer space. So then I have to say, um, yeah, I have breast cancer. And then <laughs> she's like, oh, honey, oh my gosh, come on, come on, let me take care of you. And then, I'm like, okay, well, great, thanks. Now I had to call the cancer card. So anyway, I got in um, and, you know, ER is ER. I, uh, Bob was there and I think four hours later, I um, was getting a, uh, a radiologist was going in and taking all this fluid out. So it's called a seroma. So that happened to me, and a seroma is when um, they take, anytime somebody takes tissue out of your body, all that fluid can fill up, and it just causes all this pain because it can't escape. So that's what I had. And then, um, but I will tell you this, I had fentanyl for the first time, and that's what Michael Jackson and Prince had. It is the most um, insane experience. You get this drug in you, and they tell you that it'll be out of your system within like 30 to 45 minutes. And it was, it's like, I was completely lucid, but just sort of floating and um, no pain, <laughs> no nothing. And um, it was amazing because they got two syringes like this long and this much around a fluid out of me and then put me on antibiotics for 10 days, like four pills a day. So that was that. And um, then now I just had to wait for radiation. So I went on the cruise, everything was fine. Um, did all that. Uh, infection was gone. Um, had a really nice time on the cruise, which was a really nice break. And then came back and um, was ready to go. So I'll start my next video um, or vlog soon, but just kind of wanted to give you a head start on where we're at. And then I'll also talk about the do's and don'ts for your friends that have cancer. <laughs> all right. Well, take care. And again, I'm, I should have said this at the beginning. I'm doing great. I have um, three days of radiation under me. I have um, 12 more to go, and I think it's going to be fine. I hope. They talk about a lot of symptoms with radiation. Some people say that their radiation was much worse than their chemo, but I'm hoping that that's not going to be the case, and I'm trying not to have pseudo symptoms. So um, I'll keep you posted, but I hope this helps some people, and I hope that you can see that you can have a positive attitude through all this and get through it with the help of friends and um, people that understand it. All right, bye-bye.